week. But the bigger story at the moment is Tiger Woods. John Duggan is here joining us. You've been busy scribbling this morning. More Tressa and Johnny, yeah, good morning. Yeah, I've just done an article on OffTheBall.com about my thoughts on Tiger Woods and what it symbolises and represents. And it was just one of the greatest days I've ever witnessed in sport. I'm not, I'm not, it's not hyperbole for me to say that. Uh, I am a golf fan, but that was a, a sporting story for the ages. One of the greatest comebacks in the history of sport. Of course, you can talk about Nicky Lauda or Muhammad Ali or Offaly in 94. Or, um, but that was, that was just incredible. That what, was just brilliant. What makes it better than Muhammad Ali? Because for me, in my head, that's the best sporting comeback ever. I think timing. Uh, Muhammad Ali, was. I know he was 32 when he knocked out Foreman and Zaire. Um, but, but Woods has been 11 years uh, out of the major circle. And I didn't realise the extent of his, of his back problems. He could hardly well. walk. Yeah, he yeah. could hardly walk. You're, like, you're talking about somebody who could hardly walk. Uh, not only returning to the PGA Tour and then winning... Uh, a tournament, the Tour Championship last year, but then winning a major, the Masters, beating uh, Brooks Koepka and Francesco Molinari, who've won the last three majors. So um, that to me is just, uh, look, obviously he's got good uh, physicians in that. Um, but to, just, just from a mental point of view, uh, like Butch Harmon, uh, the coach of Woods for the first eight major titles that he won, has always said this great line that Nicholas is the greatest champion. And I think champion, I think champion is not just your achievements, it's how you conduct yourself, it's how you, ambassadorial you are. But Woods is the most talented player to ever play the game. That would be my issue. Um, I just find it very, very difficult. I mean, I understand what he's achieved is great. To me, I'm not sure anything is ever going to overcome all the other stuff he's done. Now, that's just me and my own personal opinion. People may say, who cares what she thinks? And that's absolutely true. He doesn't care what I think, absolutely not. But I just, I don't know if I've seen enough good out of him as a person to appreciate the greatness he's achieved? Um, to me, I can separate the two. But can you though? Is that yeah, right? Can you separate? Well, I mean, well, it was things like he was caught like with the DUI, for example. I just think that's reprehensible. We were talking about Israel Falau earlier and what he said, which is also reprehensible. I just do sometimes wonder, like, has Tiger Woods done enough? Has he apologised enough? Has he done enough good things? I don't know because we haven't seen it in him. Do we need to see it in him? Maybe we don't. Maybe we do. I think I personally need to see it. I don't need to see it. Uh, um, because I can separate Tiger Woods, the person, from what he has achieved as a golfer, which is magical and otherworldly. Uh, and also, uh, I don't really care about if Tiger Woods is a nice guy or not today. I don't think he's a particularly nice guy. Mm -hmm. What I do care about is that I think there are a lot of people out there struggling in life and I mm -hmm. think that a lot of people uh, look at life through a black and white lens because of things that happen to them and I've been one of those people and everybody's been through tough times and ups and downs that's what life's about life's about peaks mm -hmm. and troughs right great. Uh, life is great uh, and you know for example my best friend died three years ago um, so I went through a lot of black and white moments and mm -hmm. luckily enough and very you know I was blessed to have the experience of a World Cup to see the color and joy in life again um, and I think that if you look at Tiger Woods as a symbol of somebody who's been public property since he was you know a, a small boy he was on the was it the Mike Douglas show or something mm. at four years of age uh, he was just somebody who completely um, changed race relations in ways uh, brought golf into the mainstream of American sport Very and so. commercialized American sport and was public property. Um, and at the age of 21 wins the Masters by 12 shots. Mm. So everything he does is scrutinized and then he puts up this front for his whole life and he re never really had a life. Mm. Uh, and then what happens is you have his private life um, everywhere, all over the place, the humiliation of that. If he wasn't married, would people have treated that differently? Uh, well, obviously, because he wouldn't have been cheating then. He would have yeah, just yeah, been yeah. a man who so, had then you, a lot of experience. Then, then, <laughs> a lot of experience. <laughs> then, then you have the uh, arrest a couple of years ago. His mugshot all over the world. People are saying, you know what, that's very sad. Yeah, it is. He's to be absolutely. pitied. He's going to uh, slip into obscurity and possibly privacy and we'll never see him again. And all of Tiger Woods was great. Remember him. So to me, I don't care if he's a nice guy or not. I don't think he's a nice guy. But for me, it's a symbol of what... Uh, uh, redemption is about uh, from a personal level that you can come back that you can make it that if you're seeing life in black and white you can see color again and you can achieve things even at, even if through the whole world are seeing a mugshot and going you know what we got pity on this guy now that he can reconstruct his body and then win the masters 
11 years after his last major. So that's, that was my kind of thinking about separating the things and looking at him as a symbol of uh, somebody that uh, can come back from adversity and triumph. It's, it's, it's he very makes some very good points there now. And oh, if, he does. You, if you go back to Charles Stuart Parnell and the scandal of that time when Charles Stuart Parnell and his, his relationship with that woman and so forth, and it basically split the party and all that. Now we have a situation where we have a guy who was obviously a serial um, cheater on his wife, yet is absolutely the subject of mass adulation years later because he comes back. And he's, people just accept that he's flawed and that you can make these mistakes in your personal life and ultimately we'll, we'll, we'll give you redemption because you're flawed. I think the cheating on the wife and stuff, not that I'm saying it's fine, but it's his personal business. For me, I, for people doing their own personal lives, it doesn't bother me. What kind of I didn't like about the man was that book, say, Joe Malloy was discussing that kind mm. of thing. He's just, he's just not nice to people. Now, maybe that's changed, but I just think it's really interesting, John, what you said about how you went to the World Cup and it gave colour to your life and that kind of stuff. And I think sometimes we don't see colour and when colour comes, you really have to grab it and enjoy it, whatever that is for that person. Well, a lot of people can uh, see colour in their day to day and, and nothing goes wrong for them. And I was somebody that, you know, nothing really went wrong for me in, in my life. And then something went very terribly wrong. Uh, and I know what it's like to see a black and white, like life through black and white. And then when you see colour again, you're going, oh my God, now I've seen it for a second time. And I don't want to get too personal about it. But it just, to me, it was a symbol of, it's not easy being a... Like people are going, we even discussed with Adrian Barry the other day, why aren't Dustin Johnson and Brooks Koepka polished media performers? Mm. These people are athletes, they're golfers. Um, I don't think Alex Higgins was necessarily the nicest person in the world at times, but he, but he, he was a flawed genius. Everyone loved George Best. Everyone loved George Best. Gaza, like mm. Gaza, Gaza to me has done things that are much worse than Tiger Woods. Uh, but you can even see the outpouring of emotion for him uh, when he came on in that Tottenham uh, game before the new stadium was opened. So, um, just on that as well, John, it's, it's, it's so much as Joe said, it goes back to your youth. Like, and Gaza's youth was so, so troubled in terms of things that happened when he was mm. developing as a, as a young man. And you, you have to seed something of your emotion in terms of Tiger because of he's such a tricky, tricky upbringing. And he, was, he never had a normal life, really. And it, it's inevitable that things would go wrong for him and that, you know, you would have some evidence evidence of what went wrong. Well, he was living his life through his father's yeah, uh, vision. What his dad wanted. You know, so th we're, we're, you're, we're in an army kind of situation, which generally I don't think they were that well off. Mm. Um, there's racism. And like, you're, you, you, this is what you're going to be. This is what you're going to be, son. You're going to be the best golfer in the world. Uh, you're going to be a superstar. You're going to be, and he never had a life. So it, was I surprised when it all went wrong? You could even see Tiger Woods around that time before the sex scandal, the unhappiness of him on the course cussing and being angry about shots and you see the kind of the bad behavior and like was it that Paul Dick Harrington would have said that we never saw Tiger Woods mm. we just thought he was a lonely guy who went to his hotel room uh, and um, but to be devil's advocate you could say lots of people have had really horrible upbringings and they still grow up to be at the very least polite people we're not all the same though no we're not yeah. And, and I'm not trying to make a, uh, uh, you know, uh, apologies for Tiger Woods as a person. I don't know the guy, and, and from all the evidence, I think they're probably nicer people out there. But, he, but as well, when I've covered golf tournaments, golf, golfers come across as so polite and so genteel, and it's all about the, the gentleman -y aspect of the game. These guys live in a bubble. These guys live in a selfish individual bubble. And it's all about them. And like, you know, team sports is a rarity. It happens every couple of years at the Ryder Cup. I'm trying to separate the Tiger Woods mm. um, the as, as a person, right? From the genius we saw over the last four days, culminating in that you knew that when Molinari hit it in the drink, Woods is not going to, he's not going to let him get away with this. He's going to birdie 13, he's going to birdie 15. And then Michael Phelps behind him, he nearly aces the 16th. You just knew this guy's finish, you're going to finish this with utter unbelievable bottle. And... As I said, it's a symbol of, for anybody out there struggling, that this guy was gone. His, he couldn't hardly walk, he had four back surgeries, his mug shots all over the world, you are finished son, you're, you know, you're a symbol of shame. Whereas I think now today, Tiger Woods is a symbol of what can happen if you persist. Did you feel uh, sorry for Molinari? No. He, no. No. <laughs> he's won his major. He's won his major. Ah, uh, yeah. It's Tiger's day. I felt no, a but it's, sorry it's, 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 this, like, it's like the All Blacks when they beat Ireland in 2013. Uh, I know we beat them last year. They had to play the ball from, you know, their own half, and they didn't miss a beat, and they scored. They were, you know, pure champion. Pure champion. And Stephen Hendry 
Jimmy White missed the black in 94. Stephen Hendry, you knew he was not going to miss. And there is something you have to admire about whatever a person's flaws are, whatever, how they're nice or not they are, that somebody can just absolutely execute. And we knew that Tiger Woods, even the way he dresses, he knows that, you know, I'm going to intimidate you the way I dress mm. on a Sunday. And just to see that come back after all these years, it's like Bobby Ewing in the shower in Dallas. It's like he'd never gone away. Um, John, you're, when you write, I always really enjoy it. Where can people go and find your article? Where, where we send them? Offtheball.com. It's on the golf section of the website. Just to uh, synopsize what I've just said here right now. Um, all these kind of stats are going to come out. $2 million in prize money, 15 majors, Jack's got 18. Sixth in the world was 1,199th. Um, four back surgeries, all this kind of thing. To me, just what I'm taking up from it personally is for anybody out there, you can go through hell but there can be a better day ahead. And I think that Tiger Woods for me this morning is a symbol of that. And like, there are not many better comebacks. Ali, as you said, Nicky Lauda, um, Ben Hogan as well in, in the game. But let's rejoice and celebrate a brilliant day in sport that, uh, that's not going to be repeated very soon. I think you're right in one aspect, John, and that there's not enough colour in this world. And if you can grab a bit of happiness, because you never know what's around the corner, you should take it. So thanks very much.